Assalamu alaikum everyone. So lecture number six and today we will be uh, reviewing different questions regarding transmission fundamentals. And these are the bullets which uh, we will be going through uh, in consent of review questions. First signals for conveying information. Then in that bullet we will be talking about or looking for review questions, uh, time domain concepts, frequency domain concepts, relationship between data, data rate and bandwidth. And then uh, in analog and digital transmission, we will be talking about uh, if we have uh, analog and digital data. And then we can also use analog and digital signal signaling in order to represent that data. And then uh, again, we need some transmission media in order to have communication so we can use analog and digital transmission. Then uh, we will be talking about transmission media rather than uh, channel capacity, right? So in transmission media, we will talk about microwave transmission. So uh, actually, we will be having review questions uh, regarding those different topics and subtopics. Okay, so uh, let's start with the first review question. So uh, here we have to differentiate between analog and digital electromagnetic signal, right? So you can uh, see we have two uh, figures A and B. So in figure A, we have digital uh, analog data, or you can say continuous data. There is no break, no discontinuity in between. So on the x-axis, we have the time axis, time, and on the y-axis, we have the amplitude that represents the strength of the signal, and that is in volts. And here in figure B, we have a uh, signal that maintains its level for a certain amount of time, right? And then there is a change, right? You can say this is a sort of abrupt change. And he again, here we have time on x-axis and the strength of the signal that is amplitude is on y-axis. So we have to differentiate between analog and digital signal. So as we all know that uh, uh, the best example we can give regarding the analog signal is the voice because it's changing all the time and the we have a telephone set that convert our voice into electrical pulses and transmits that sound over a, some media. So in uh, the lower part, at the lower part we have a digital data, right? So here we have analog data and we are using analog signaling uh, or you can say electrical pulses that are uh, here analog in order to represent this analog data. So analog data and we are use analog signaling in order to represent that data. And uh, at the bottom we have digital data. You can see uh, we have uh, the signal, the data that maintains its level for a certain amount of time. So here we have digital data and this is the modem and the functionality of the modem is to mix this d uh, digital data or any sort of data with a carrier in order to transmit the signal over a channel, over a transmission media. So here uh, we have binary voltage pulses and the modem is using some carrier in order to mix or modulate the signal and here we have analog signaling. So digital data and we are using analog signaling in order to represent this data. 
So here you can see uh, digital data and analog signaling. This one. So the example is optical fiber and satellite will only propagate analog signal. So some media that can only transmit analog signaling. So whatsoever the data is, we have to convert that data in order to transmit that data over the analog channels, for example, fiber optics and for satellite communication. And then we have analog data and analog signaling. And the best example is our voice and the telephone is converting the voice into the analog signal. So here we have uh, analog signal and digital. So it should be data. So analog data and we are using uh, digital signaling. So it should be data rather than signal. So we are actually using Kodak in order to encode this data, right? So it needs a full-fledged mechanism in order to do that. You take samples and you need to take care about the sampling data. then you are assigning different codes to those samples and then we will be having the digitized data. So here we have digital data and digital signaling is used in order to represent the digital data. And this is the digital trans transceiver actually, not the transmitter transceiver, which can transmit and receive at the same time. So in general, uh, the equipment for encoding digital data into a digital signal is less complex because they are native. So for analog data, conversion of analog data to digital form, it allows the use of modern digital transmission and switching equipment for analog data. Because now most of the uh, receiving endpoints or you can say uh, the client equipment, they are supporting digital reception so it's rather favorable or you can say that it's good to convert data into digital signals right so that's so here uh, the uh, we have to differentiate between the analog and digital So let's uh, look at the signals. We have to differentiate between the elect uh, analog and digital signal. So again, same figures with more explanation. So you can see that we don't have any break, any discontinuity within this signal. So it varies with time. So this is uh, an analog signal. So here we have signal that keeps its level for a certain amount of time. So that's why we call it a digital signal. Or you can say digital data also. So here we have the comparison. So data can be analog or digital. So here we have compared the two different signals, right? So you can see this is the amplitude and this is the time. 
again uh, these are somewhat different examples so you can see the level is also changing over here and before we have the same level so here level is also changing but this uh, level remains constant for certain amount of time and here you can see that this level remains same for a certain amount of time so again and here also so if I want to represent the number of values in this signal so it can have infinite number of values for each point or you can say that each point at each point we will be having we'll be having different values I'm not able to draw the state lines right so let me try over here so at each point we have different values even you can have uh, more points between those neighboring lines and the digital sig signals on the other hand they can have only a limited number of values so here we have a limited number of values that is another RV question so we have to mention the three important characteristics of a periodic signal so first of all we have to define what a periodic signal is right so here you can see uh, this is an analog signal right and this is here we have the digital signal and if I mark over here so you can see the signal completes one cycle over here at this point and then we are looking the repetition of the same signal and here we have the second cycle and if I look here here we have one cycle and this is the second cycle again on the x-axis we have time on the y-axis we have the amplitude mentioning the strength of the signal so here level of the signal on y-axis and time is on x-axis so you can see uh, one cycle is finished here so I can say that uh, t is equal to 1 over f and that is actually amount of time taken by the signal in order to complete one cycle so again time period t is equal to 1 over f and the time taken by the signal in order to complete one cycle so we can also have some other uh, sort of periodic signals are uh, simple or composite a simple period this, these are the simple periodic signals for example sine wave a composite periodic signal on the other side is composed of multiple sine waves so this is the example or mathematical representation of the periodic signal so s of t plus t where capital T is the time period of the signal is equal to s of t because after every t the signal repeats itself so this is the ma mathematical notation in order to represent this periodic signal 
so here we have sine wave and this is called the scare wave right so this this actually is the so uh, here we have a simple sine wave and we will be mentioning the characteristics of that sine wave so you can see that we have the maximum level on the positive side and the maximum level on the negative side so uh, this maximum level is actually is is the amplitude or peak amplitude and it uh, is represented in volts for signaling then we have another parameter that is frequency so uh, as mentioned that uh, the time taken by the signal in order to complete one cycle is the time period and the inverse of time period is frequency rate of change of the signal or it is mentioned in hertz or cycles per second so how many cycles are being made in one second time for one repetition t and the and they are inversely proportional to each other then we have another important parameter that is phase and that is actually the relative position of the signal in time so here we have mentioned the amplitude change right so you can see we have the amplitude that remains constant till this point and here amplitude changes right so there is a change so now it is remaining same so here uh, we have frequency change so there is some problem I suppose right so I will not be able to show you the frequency change or let me draw it here if uh, I'm able to draw it so here we have so actually the signal starts here from zero and then suddenly you can see changes right and again it remains same between this point and this point and again it's changing it's change so this is a sort of frequency change and you can also say maybe you can also say uh, in addition to frequency amplitude also changes and here we have the example for phase change amplitude right and it's the same again on y axis and here we have the time axis so here the signal starts at zero and here the signal starts at 90 degrees so there is a phase shift of 90 degree and here there is a 180 degree phase shift so these are the examples for phase change so you can see here we have the same signal going through so no phase change and here we have a cut over here right the half of the signal right so there is a phase change of 90 degree and here you can see the phase reversal you also can name it a phase reversal so actually it should be like this let me draw so normally it should be like this but there is a phase reversal of how much 
180 degree and here uh, you can see 270 degree phase change so uh, we have to mention three important characteristics of a periodic signal so that's what we discussed amplitude frequency and phase are the three important characteristics of a periodic signal so these are here we have two signals with the same phase and frequency but different amplitude so if I compare you can see that the phase because the signal here starting from 0 again here starting from 0 and this is the one cycle completed over here and here again and so it means phase and frequency are the same but the height of the signal it is different so here we have the peak amplitude greater than this signal right so signal with low amplitude and signal with high amplitude so here we have uh, two signals again with the same amplitude and phase but different frequencies so you can see the starting point uh, is from zero so same phase and same amplitude but the number of cycles being made in one second is different so here you can see that uh, the period is 1 by 12 second and here period is 1 by 6 second so we have a large time period so this signal takes longer time to complete one cycle as compared to this signal so here uh, we have three sine waves with same amplitude and frequency but with different phases so here different amplitude different frequency and here we have different phase so you can see this is here we have zero degree because it is starting from zero but the frequency and amplitude is the same and here we are starting from here so 90 degree phase is 90 degree and here we are starting from here so phase is 180 degree so again uh, we are dealing with periodic signal but the real question over here is different so here we have to mention that how many radians are there in a complete circle of 360 degree so first of all we need to know that if we have a circle like this right so this is the center and right and for example the radius of this circle is r and if I have to swap right so there should be some distance traveled by this pointer from here to here right so if I start from here and I go like this and I reach here so uh, how much distance I traversed right that is half of a circle and that is 180 degree right so there is a relationship that is shown over here that pi radians is equal to 180 degree right so you can say that we start from here and this is the 180 degree so that is uh, the angle 
and we show the angle here like here 180 degree here and the radians are being traversed over here so pi radians is equal to 180 degrees if I multiply both sides by 2 so it means 2 pi radians is equal to 360 degree so we will be having 2 pi radians so here we have a uh, second review question from the same concept so a uh, sine wave is offset 1 by 6 cycle with respect to time 0 what is its phase in degrees and radians so as we know that a one complete cycle it takes 360 degrees right so if I circle here and this is the center and here we have the radius so one complete cycle is equal to 360 degrees so this is the solution 1 by 6 multiplied by 360 60 degree and we know that we have a very renowned relationship that we have discussed pi radians is equal to 180 degree right so 1 degree is equal to pi radians divided by 180 and 60 degree is equal to so I, I can write here 60 degree is equal to pi by 180 multiplied by 60 that is equal to radians so here here so that will be the answer 1.046 radians okay so here we have to mention the relationship between wavelength and frequency of a sine wave so first of all in order to respond uh, for a question like this we should know that what a wavelength is then we will be able to relate them we will be able to relate wavelength with frequency so here we have a wave and this is crest and trough crest so distance between two successive crest or if I continue this wave so we will be having trough over here so in that case distance between two successive troughs will be the wavelength or you can say that the distance between two points right same points on a wave they can also be defined as a wavelength or in a very simplest way if I have a wave like this so it's a complete wave so I will I have a scale so this is a scale so I consider that this is the thread and I will measure the length of this thread and that length is actually the lambda or you can say that will be the wavelength okay so uh, these are different signals or waves but they are having different frequency so here we have uh, if amplitude A is unit and again here amplitude is reduced half so change in amplitude but the frequency is the same 1 complete wave or one vibration is being made in one second so here you can see it's changed 
in the same time, one second, two waves are being completed. So again, so here again, uh, phase is also changing, and you can see is also change if I compare this with this. So these are the definitions. Period is the amount of time it takes uh, signals, the time taken by the signal to complete one cycle. And this is the time period. And here we have, we can see the number of cycles that are being made in one second. So if, if vibrations are being made in one second, one vibration is being made 1 over F and that is the T actually. So and this is the relationship. So these are the units that are associated with frequency and period. Second, uh, one second and we have one hertz and mentioned as one hertz millisecond. So 10 raised to the power minus 3 seconds. And you know that uh, we have to invert it. So 1 over 10 raised to the power minus 3 is equal to 10 raised to the power 3. And that is 1k. So for time period, for frequency, we have hertz, so 1 kilohertz, so microsecond 10 is for minus 6. So this is uh, again, we need to invert 1 over 10 to the power minus 6, that is equal to 10 to the power 6, and that is 1 mega. So hertz will become alongside, so mega hertz similarly nanosecond, gigahertz, picosecond, and we have terahertz. So here we will try to prove the relationship. So uh, you can see the definitions of wavelength, different definitions, uh, but we have already discussed the definition uh, as distance between two successive crests or between two successive troughs, or uh, the wavelength of a signal is the distance occupied by a signal cycle. So uh, I have also explained this and you can also uh, define wavelength as the distance between two points of corresponding phase. So if I take this, you can say this and this phase and then this phase. So that distance can also be defined as the wavelength. So you know that uh, when we talk about the signal, so there is the sig signal, it travels with a certain amount of velocity. So let's uh, V is the velocity of the signal and the T is the time and we know S is equal to VT that is a very renowned equation so here we are not talking about the distance but we are talking about the wavelength that is also representation of the distance but the distance of the wave for which we are actually talking about that it is traveling with the velocity of light so lambda and this is the v velocity and here we have t right and what we need to show you know that we already proved t is equal to 1 over f so let me put V 
over f lambda. So v is equal to lambda f. So that is the relationship we are actually interested in and this is the relationship between wavelength and frequency and that's what we are actually wavelength and frequency of a sine wave or so that 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 is actually the v is the speed of the signal so here we have used uh, another method in order to show the relationship between wavelength and period so we know we have already proved that lambda f is equal to v and this is the transmission medium and at time here we have delayed the signal with t so t plus capital T where capital T is the period of the signal right and here you can see that we have this is mentioning the wavelength that is lambda and we already have proved this relationship so what we need to do we know that f is equal to 1 over t and we will lambda over t is equal to v so in both ways you can have this relationship here we need to find the relationship between signal spectrum and its bandwidth so these are the concepts we have to take into mind in order to find the relationship between spectrum and bandwidth so let's talk about uh, spectrum so spectrum actually uh, if it's, it's a frequency related or frequency domain concepts so the spectrum of a signal is the component of all is, is a collection of all the components or uh, as uh, we know that each signal it have more than one frequency components right and if we collect or we take all the components into account and we draw them or we take them into the frequency domain then we will have a range so that range is actually mentioning the spectrum of the signal and the bandwidth uh, of that signal is actually the width or you can say uh, for example let me show over here so if we have a signal like this and this is time and here we have the amplitude and I move that signal into frequency domain so here we have frequency and here we have the amplitude so that F1, F2. So the length of uh, or the width of this frequency spectrum, right? So this is uh, bandwidth of the signal. And if you want to mention spectrum, so we already have right and then I have
this is the one case and in another case we can have So you can see that we have, s here we have signal with different amplitudes but having the same frequency. And here we have signal with different amplitudes and with different frequencies. So they are superimposed. So uh, actually this uh, can represent the frequency spectrum of the signal because each signal is made up of different frequency components is mentioned in one of our previous lectures that if we have a digital signal like this so that is composed of infinite number of frequencies because we have discontinuity at this at those points so there is an abrupt change as at those points And we all already know the frequency is the number of occurrences of a repeating event per unit time and bandwidth difference between upper and the lower frequencies as mentioned here. Right. So the uh, spectrum of, of a signal consists of the frequencies it contains and uh, while the bandwidth of a signal is the width of the spectrum. So let's uh, have another. If we have a periodic signal that is decomposed into five sine waves with frequencies of 100, 300, 500, 700, 900 hertz. So you can see that we have a difference of 200 hertz for each component. So this 100 is actually the fundamental frequency of that signal and then we have uh, a difference of 200 so it can be uh, an integral multiple of the fundamental frequency right so so what we need to answer what is the bandwidth and we have to draw the spectrum uh, but assuming all components have a maximum amplitude of 10 volts so here we have the same amplitude. So let F H be the highest frequency and F L is the lowest frequency and B is the bandwidth. So as mentioned that if we have for example this is F L and this is F H, so it will be the bandwidth is equal to F H upper frequency minus low frequency. So here you can see if we look at the figures, numbers, then this is the highest and this is the lowest. So 900 minus 100, that is the bandwidth. And now we have to show the spectrum. So here is the spectrum and you can see the amplitude is the same. We have a spike at 100, spike at 300 and this is actually the spectrum. And this is the bandwidth, width of the frequency. So now we have another question regarding spectrum and bandwidth relationship. Uh, a periodic signal has a bandwidth of 20 hertz. The highest frequency is 60 hertz. What is the lowest frequency? So 
and we have to draw the spectrum if the signal contains all frequencies of the same amplitude. So amplitude is constant here again and we know that FH is the highest and FL the lowest and V is the bandwidth. So we know the bandwidth and we know the highest frequency and by putting the values we will be able to find the lowest frequency that is 40 hertz. So if I need to draw so bandwidth of 20 so let's say we have 20 here so lower is 40 and highest is 60 and the difference is 20 so you can see we have spikes at 40 41 42 and this is the bandwidth and this is the spectrum another question mentioning spectrum and bandwidth relationship so here we have non periodic signal non periodic composite signal has a bandwidth of 200 kilohertz with a middle frequency of 140 kilohertz so this is the middle frequency and peak amplitude of 20 volt the two extreme frequencies have an amplitude of 0 draw the frequency domain of the signal so again we have to show the signal in the frequency domain so the lowest frequency must be 40 kilohertz because we have a bandwidth of 200 and middle frequency is 40 140 So there is a difference of 100 and then the lowest should be 40. Again, we have a difference of 100 here. So 140, peak at 140. A peak amplitude of 20. So you can see 140, we have a peak amplitude. So this is a uh, there is a difference of 100 hertz, kilohertz and the lowest should be 40 because okay so here we have a review question regarding attenuation so whenever we talk about detransmission our communication systems so there are certain impairments that come in our way and attenuation is one of those impairments so uh, we will be discussing uh, about attenuation so uh, when we transmit a signal and uh, we have to receive that signal at the receiver side but uh, there are chances that the receiver uh, is receiving a different signal that is actually transmitted so there can be different causes for that different received signal as uh, it was transmitted from the trans transmitter and and if we talk about the analog and the digital transmission and uh, there can be different reasons regarding the attenuation right so here we have shown what uh, attenuation is actually this decrease in the strength of the signal as is it travel more and more distance so the attenuation actually depend on the type of the medium so in order to overcome this problem 
the transmitted signals should be strong enough so that it is detectable at the receiver side. So let me give you an example, a very simple example. one zero zero one and one so I have transmitted one zero zero one one and this is the transmitter sign so I'm using a medium whatsoever the medium is so as we know there are some impairments that are introduced by this medium irrespective of what sort of medium this is. So on the receiver side, so I should mention plus 5 volts and here we have minus 5 volts. So again plus 5 volts and here we have minus 5 volts. But the level of the signal right so you can say this is 3.9 and here we have 4.3 but on the receiver side we already have provision that 3.5 to 5 volt that is 1 and we have 0 to minus 3.5 that is 0 right so still this is detectable because the attenuation is within the limit but if we have a case where the receive signal so plus 5 and again minus 5. If the receive signal is so this is uh, let's say 3.4 and here we have 3.9 so this will be not considered at 1 right so that will be a 0 0 0 and 1 1 so you have transmitted 1 but on the receiver side it is taken as 0 because of attenuation right so that's why the signal should be strong enough to be detected and the level of the signal because there can be another problem that there uh, can be some noises that is actually superimposed so the level of the signal should be higher than the level of the noise that is superimposed over the signal so then we can have certain remedies we can use loading coils or amplifiers in order to amplify the signal for example here we have the transmitter that is here and receiver here so what we can do we can have amplifier after some distance so amplifier amplifier right? so we have one two three amplifiers and then so the responsibility of this amplifier to receive the signal extract the noise and repeat the same data here again it will receive the signal amplify uh, signal and 
if there is some noise it will filter out the noise and transmit the fresh signal and again here it will receive the signal so if there is some noise that is added from here to here then it will filter that noise out and will retransmit the signal and then it can be received so but we have to invest more in order to have this sort of solution so here uh, we have another problem so we can also have dispersion attenuation on a fiber optic right so you can see that reduce power right and so this is the amplitude is reduced or attenuated but here you can see that the pulses are spreaded right so we can also have problem like this in addition to so whenever we transmit a signal its strength falls off as it travels distance over any transmission medium and uh, another problem with attenuation is that the attenuation varies with different frequencies as mentioned that uh, if we have a signal like this So one zero zero one one, and we need to transmit one zero zero one one. So as mentioned, so these are discontinuities. So if I decompose, so this is time and this is amplitude, and here we have the time representation of the signal. And if I have to represent this signal in frequency domain so I'm assuming just assuming so this is uh, one frequency component and then we have another frequency component right? and then I can have another frequency component like this so f1 f2 and f3 so whenever I will transmit, so those different components, they can be attenuated differently. So it will across, it will come across A1 attenuation, it will come, and A3, right? So the problem with attenuation is that it can also vary with frequency. So we have different frequencies, and then the attenuation can be different. for different frequency components of a single or unique signal. So here we have mentioned receive signal strength must be. These are the remedies or solutions in order to avoid the attenuation. So signal strength must be strong enough so that it can be detected. So uh, the signal level should be sufficiently high than the noise in order to receive the signal. So we can use amplifiers, we can also use equalizers in order to overcome this problem. If we have uh, different band of frequencies, okay, so then we have another review question that is we need to define the channel capacity what actually the channel capacity is so this is actually the maximum rate at which the data can be transmitted over a channel or over a transmission medium under given conditions so we need to know some of the communication concepts that is the data rate as mentioned that we have data rate so the rate at which data can be communicated over a 
transmission medium. It is mentioned in bits per second. Then obviously uh, we need to know the bandwidth that we have all already mentioned. Noise, unwanted signal and the error rate, the rate at which errors occur. So we have to define the channel capacity and that is actually the maximum rate at which data can be transmitted over a communication path under given conditions. The conditions mean that uh, for a certain medium it can have its own physical, chemical and other characteristics. So that's why and uh, moreover there can also be some uh, effect on the communication as a result of different environmental conditions, right? So for example temperature and some other parameters can affect the data rate. For example, rainfall uh, for some uh, uh, wireless communication or microwave communication, right? So that's why we have mentioned under given conditions. So here we need to mention different factors that can affect the channel capacity. So we, we have already mentioned the channel capacity, the rate at which data can be transmitted over a given communication media under certain conditions. So as we know that in order to build uh, a communication system we have to invest a lot. right? So if we wish to uh, that the system should support more bandwidth, right? So it will be more expensive. But uh, if we are restricted to a certain medium, then each medium has its upper limit, right? So we can transmit a limited amount of data over that medium by using that medium. So these upper limits are being imposed due to the physical properties of the transmission medium or maybe uh, the receiver side has some sort of uh, upper limits, right? So uh, as a result, there are some factors that has to be taken into account when we are going to design a communication system. So you can say that uh, on the other side, if we are going to calculate the channel capacity for a certain communication system, so we have to take into account certain factors, right? So what are those factors? So these are the bandwidth that is supported by the medium. So as I've mentioned that there can be also uh, a limit imposed by the receiver, right? So the receiver can, don't have the capability to support a huge amount of bandwidth that actually is supported by the transmission medium, right? And then noise, it's also uh, the factor that can affect the channel capacity and then the error rate, right? The uh, rate at which the errors are occurring. So these are the factors that actually can affect the channel capacity. So that's all for today's lecture. So today we've discussed review questions regarding uh, different topics. So first we talked about the analog and digital signals and their difference and uh, what is the difference between periodic and a periodic signal and we can also have a uh, composite signals and we uh, solved some of the new questions regarding those uh, different concepts and we can also uh, use analog signaling in order to represent analog as well as digital data we can also use digital signaling in order to represent analog and uh, digital data. So then we talked about uh, different transmission media that are, uh, uh, that can, uh, that support uh, analog signaling and 
digital signal and we talked about the review questions regarding those different uh, concepts and then we talked about different uh, transmission impairments and what are the key reasons and uh, what are the steps which we can take in order to avoid those transmission impairments in order to have uh, in order to utilize all the uh, bandwidth and the available resources within the communication system and we also discuss some of the review questions uh, regarding those different uh, concepts so for example bandwidth spectrum and relationship between uh, channel capacity and uh, uh, the spectrum and the bandwidth and then uh, we talked about the factors that affect the channel capacity and uh, we also uh, discussed some of the new questions regarding those different topics. So that's all. Uh, Allah Hafiz. Assalamu alaikum.